Hi, welcome back to my shop. All right, now I've gotten all of my design decisions kind of nailed down. I have all of my case sides, top and bottom, milled and dimensioned. So it's finally time to start cutting some joinery. So my first decision is going to be about laying out my actual dovetails. The trick to this piece is that the top is obviously narrower than the wider bottom because of the stepped sides. So I need to come up with a pattern of tails that actually looks appealing, even though we're gonna to have to span two different distances on the case. Now I'm using butternut for this project, and I found that butternut is, is a little bit of a softer hardwood. It kind of dents easily. Um, it's not quite as bad as pine or something like that, but it's definitely not quite as hard or as dense as its close cousin, black walnut. So I've decided to go with a one to six ratio for these dovetails. And that gives me just a little bit of a steeper angle, and that'll work a little bit better for a softer wood. Just like any set of dovetails, my first step is to take my tailboards, which in this case are gonna be my top and my bottom, and just scribe my, my marks, or my shoulders, ultimately, for the dovetails with my marking gauge. And you can see, I think this is probably a good example, you can see sort of how um, kind of soft butternut ends up being, because it's super easy for me to make these marks. An important thing to remember when you're dovetailing a case piece like this together is that typically you're gonna have a rabbit around the back. You're looking at the top piece right now. And this is the back of the top piece. And you'll have a rabbit cut all along that that's going to have the back boards, which will probably just be strips of shiplap board that will um, get recessed in there. So sort of traditionally the way to account for that with the dovetails is to end your board uh, with a half tail rather than a pin. So if you think of my marking gauge as the dovetail itself, and in fact, I like to use the entire width of this to set my tails in a lot of cases just because it makes the process easier. So I first need to consider that I have a 5 8 inch piece that's gonna be rabbited in the back. And if I were to split this piece to do a half tail on my back, I can see that that more than a accounts for the thickness of that piece that's going to get rabbited in the back. Really the biggest decision that I have to make on a piece like this is, is the width of the, the pins. I can sort of vary the width of the tails because they are going to be wider and I just need to decide if I'm going to try to stick with the same number of tails top to bottom, again because the top is narrower than the bottom, or if I want to uh, actually use the tails that are the same width and use more of them on the bottom and fewer of them on the top. So I kind of have two choices there, but I think it's very important to keep the, the pins the same width or roughly the same width. I mean, a lot of people will just lay these things out, um, but it's just as easy for me to actually use some kind of rhyme or reason. Now this is a, a piece of cutoff I have from the 5 8 inch stock. And so I considered using that to set the width of my pins, but at the end of the day, that creates uh, square pins, which I just don't think looks that great. It looks a little bit um, remedial. But again, I don't wanna go with crazy, super narrow pins. So I have um, a setup block here that's 3 8 So just kind of notching it down a little bit. And I think that's gonna be a good choice because it'll give me um, pins that are wide enough that they're structurally sound and will keep my case you know, nice and rigid, but at the same time, we'll still have a, basically a three to five ratio. So that is going to be my pin width right there. And then after marking my pin, because this is the tailboard, not the pin board, I make sure to mark an X inside those pins to remind myself that's the area that I'm gonna waste out. So then that leaves me with the next piece that'll be a tail. And I need to lay these out um, to determine exactly the width these tails need to be. To figure out my pin and tail layout, I just had to do a little bit of calculation. So I have my half tail at the end, 
followed by one pin, which again is the width of this setup block, or three eighths of an inch. And then I have my starter pin on the front piece, which is also three eighths of an inch. So I decided that I wanted to have one, two, three, four dovetails fall in between that. So I basically just took my center scale here and figured out where the middle of that was going to be. So I marked my center and then I put a tail or a, a pin exactly in the center and then I did the same thing. I divided this in half again to the left and put my 3 8 inch pin in the center of that span. So that left me with these tails that are unfortunately a little bit wider or a little bit narrower than my um, dovetail setup, so I'm not going to be able to use this to physically set up the dovetails, but um, I still use that to, to mark the lines, just not the width. And then to transfer these lines along the other side, I then just determined the exact width of the beginning of each tail and set it up with this compass, and then I can use that in conjunction with my setup block on the other side to set those, those pins and tails as well. The other consideration in all this is, again, my top is not as wide as my bottom. So my dilemma is, do I want to just have the exact same number of tails and make them wider on the bottom than on the top? Or do I want to just have an additional tail, for example, on the bottom? And if you can see the difference between the widths of the two sides, and again, I have my compass set up here at the exact width of the beginning of the tail, um, that happens to be uh, just about perfect. In fact, if I widen this a little bit so I can see the exact width of the front of the tail, that will be the real telling piece. It is almost dead on. I mean, it's, it's just maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off. So that means that I can make up that difference in that half tail that I have to have at the end so you won't see any difference there. And I can use exactly the same width of the dovetails and I'll just have one additional dovetail on the bottom piece. So that works out pretty well. So now I'm just drawing out my tails on the reverse side of the top and I don't have to do any math anymore because I've got my divider set. So all I have to do, and I've, I've got this back set to the inside dimension of the the inside of each tail and I just make a little mark man it's, it's actually kind of hard to see marks pencil marks on this butternut and then I just put down my setup block slide this up against it Mark the other side of that pin, put my X so I know that that's waste, and then I just keep going from there. In order for me to make it easier to align the top and the sides, when I go to transfer the tails to the, the pin piece, I'm going to cut a very shallow rabbit on each of the sides that's the exact same width uh, or I'm sorry, on each on the top and the bottom, that's the same width as each of the sides. Um, I'm cutting this before I actually cut the tails because it'll actually make the dovetails a little bit easier to cut because the stock will be you know nominally thinner by about a sixteenth to an eighth somewhere in, in there. It's it's not an exact science. It just needs to be the same left to right, top to bottom. So I have my sacrificial fence and the table saw with my dado stack set up. And I've got it set so that the teeth are, the outside edge of, of the teeth are just hitting that marking gauge line that I set before. Now it's just a matter of actually cutting all of the tails. This project is going to involve a lot of hand cut dovetails, so this is just a warm up in a lot of ways.
So I've got my tail boards all done. The waste is removed, and now you're gonna see where that, that rabbit that I cut before comes in handy because I'm going to use this to transfer to the pin boards. And I've got the side here just clamped to the front of my bench, and then I can just slide this forward until I hit that rabbit. And then all I have to do is make sure that the bottom, or the I guess in this case it's the, the back, of the bottom and the back of the side are nice and aligned. And then I just take my marking gauge and start going down the line and marking each of these pins. And then I can continue transferring my marks down the side. So I've just finished cleaning up this tailboard and really just kind of getting any uh, refuse out of the corners and getting nice tight um, tight 90 degree angles in there because that's kind of key to getting a good fit. And then I also just looked any place that I could still see any hint of my uh, mark from my marking knife when I transferred the, the pins from the tails. I just cleaned up a little bit with a chisel going from the, the inside. Um, or from the top to the bottom. You, you don't ever want to go with with the grain because then you have the opportunity to let to let the grain sort of affect your chisel and wander off the line. So um, the key here is making sure that you've got nice square um, areas that you waste out because you want you want to make sure that there's no excess material in the middle here that's going to keep that from, from seating nice and tightly. So I, I've really just done all of my work just looking for any you know, gaps in where my lines were, making sure everything was nice and square, and making sure those corners are clean. And if you can do that, and if you marked your, um, your pins properly from your tails, or if you do the, the reverse, then you should have a pretty good uh, success rate on the first fit. So just popping my pin board out of the twin screw and making sure I get the, this is the front edge here, I have it marked front, and then obviously the stepped front here is the front, so I know I'm oriented properly. And that is a nice slip fit. Um, I really don't like to have to use a, a mallet or a hammer uh, or dead blow hammer to get the joints to fit because that means that there's going to be stresses put on some of the, the pins. So this is kind of the perfect fit you want. I can still lift this up and it'll stay together, but I can pull it back apart just with hand pressure. So that's, again, I didn't have to do any fine tuning after cutting the, the pin board just by really focusing on keeping everything square and to my marking lines. I was able to get a, a really nice fit right off the, uh, the saw with a little cleanup work. Mm -hmm. 